Callaghan, bitte. Uh, thank you very much. That was a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I have uh, questions for uh, Neil Valentine and for Ivory Young uh, Protzel. Uh, uh, Neil, uh, in outlining uh, uh, what she do, uh, it, it stated that she borrow on international markets. I'm just wondering, are there any impediments to the bank borrowing directly from the ECB? And if not, are ye? And uh, given that uh, they're currently uh, well, uh, doling out money at negative interest rates, uh, in order to boost the European economy, uh, basically so that people can borrow money potentially to buy uh, uh, more toys for their children or to go on holidays, etc. But uh, it would obviously make more sense if it was more targeted and uh, this was done for something that would uh, do something in a sustainable way to boost the economy through infrastructure. So can you borrow uh, from there? And... Uh, uh, obviously, uh, this would mean that you would be able to uh, lend to uh, uh, the benefit of the European Union because the benefit keeps being mentioned at uh, lower interest rates. Now, it's not infrastructure, but I've just been looking at some of the rates that you were talking about lending to farmers at 3%. It's kind of hard to, to see where the difference goes, and it's also hard to see um, given that banks around Europe uh, through quantitative easing are getting, getting paid to take money that at the end of the day, to the benefit of uh, Europeans, people might have to end up paying 3% interest on that. I'm just wondering, is there not a better way, or as the rapporteur mentioned, uh, a joint arrangement? Because uh, we're all in this together, aren't we? Uh, so uh, I'd be interested to know what you have to say on that. Um, uh, Ivory, I'm um, uh, uh, very interested in listening to what you have to say. Um, uh, in particular, I have a question in relation to Ireland. I've been looking at uh, money that's, that has been lent down through the years, and as I'm sure you're aware, there was a European banking crash, and this massively affected Ireland, and uh, lots of people were burnt. I'm just wondering, was the investment bank burnt anywhere? Uh, I noticed that lending went, uh, took place to uh, allied Irish banks, which... Uh, uh, was uh, spontaneously combusted. I don't think there was even flames that went up so quick. I'm just wondering, uh, uh, did you uh, face uh, any problems in relation to that? And given that uh, you investigate thoroughly anything that you put money into, uh, did you take any notice of the, uh, um, uh, well, the obvious warning signs to anyone who was capable of adding figures uh, that uh, came to uh, no more than four? two and two, for example. So I'm just wondering, did you notice this or did you uh, get burnt in any way? Thanks very much. Colleague Flanagan, Flanagan please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, I've been uh, reading about this and uh, I've listened to the, the first few speakers from the Commission, but uh, I think uh, Mr. Ibanez, uh, um, after listening to you, uh, I think there is one definite use for this project, uh, a massive sieve maybe to strain spaghetti because there's so many holes in it after listening to what you said that uh, I can't see how anyone is brave enough to stand up and justify it afterwards. Uh, it's astonishing actually. And I know if you take an hour off a journey potentially it might improve people's lives but uh, there is such a thing as cost-benefit analysis. Maybe if those people on that train have to work an extra two hours a day because they have to pay so much, to tax, so much tax to pay for that train line, you lose an hour, don't you? So I think you have to look at the overall picture. So they, I have two questions for the first three speakers. Uh, the French government engaged itself to provide a cost certification, certification assessment of the tunnel's expenses as clearly asked by the French Court of Auditors and stated by Article 18 of the Fr Italian-French Agreement. Where is it? Uh, do we have a financial assessment by independent experts certifying the legitimacy of the good faith agreement undertaken by the European Union? If not, when will we have it? And uh, two questions for uh, Daniel Ibanez. How can we guarantee that the Leon Turin uh, uh, project is not going to be another financial black hole? Its costs are already estimated to be, as you've said, six times higher than the Perpignan Figueres project, and this one, as you know, is bankrupt. And finally, how would you explain that both Swiss and the Austrians have reached a 15 to 17 million tonne level of transport of commodities by rail, while France is at 3.2 million tonnes, despite having achieved a level of 10 million tonnes in 19 
1983. And I just want to congratulate Daniel again on the information he's given us here today. I think Europe would be in a better state if we listened to people like him. Thank you. Thank you.